Hey, what's going on? You know who it is. You know what it is. All right, you guys. I'm going to be completely honest with y'all because I really want to break this down because I really want to give you an honest assessment of what I'm about to say. And this is the honest to God truth. You know, there come a time where sometimes you have to put certain things to the side and where sometimes you just have to call it out, whether you could consider yourself a reporter, a journalist, freelancer, whatever the case may be. Uh, me, myself, I'm somewhere in between. I am in the field reporting on boxing. I am a credential media member. And at the end of the day, a lot of times with um, my constituents and, you know, when it retains to the boxing conglomerate, it's just really tough out there. And I understand a lot of these dudes like the idea that they get to cover these events they get access and, and perks that other people can't get. And most of these dudes, they deserve to be there. They put in the work. Uh, they work hard to get where they are. But then it comes a time where sometimes they have to save fighters from themselves. And they have to just say stuff that is blatantly um, not factual. Sometimes when a fighter is doing a interview. Because it hurts the fighter and then to a certain degree, it kind of hurts uh, the reporter. And like I said before, I like being out there. I'm not going to lie. I never said that I didn't. I love uh, being out in the field reporting, you know, getting to cover these events and try to give you all the best uh, boxing analysis that a guy could give you. You know, I'm really out there asking those tough questions. And to a certain degree, um, it could come with a price. A lot of times when you ask these fighters the tough questions, sometimes they get mad at you. Um, sometimes they will go as far as to ostracize you or, you know, um, whiteball you. I'll say whiteball because most of those promotional companies are controlled by non-blacks. But um, for the most part, y'all see me. Um I have a certain way I do interviews and then it's a certain way that I teach the people under me to do interviews. You know, one thing about me, I try to be courteous to the other people that's out there trying to get their footage, trying to get their interviews in. One thing about me, I, I don't, and I'm just going to be honest with you. If you get a one-on-one, -on -one, I don't really feel it's necessary to talk to one fighter for 15 minutes unless you're doing you know, unless you're doing an interview, you know, basically on your own outlet um, from basically this person's, you know, this man or woman, because we have male and female boxers uh, from their own home. Now, if you're doing one of those type of interviews where, you know, basically it's a one on one and it's set up, then, hey, you can talk as long as you want. But me, myself, I feel when you at an event and you trying to talk to these fighters, I think you need to be courteous of other media members and media people. And that's what I try to do. That's why I try to keep all my interviews under five minutes. Unless like all the media is gone and then, you know, you can go a little bit longer. But when everybody's out there, you do need to be courteous. But at the same time, uh, when you interviewing these people, sometimes you have to bring something to their attention when it's not accurate, no matter how mad you think they're going to get at you or whatever the case may be. You just have to take a risk. And that's what I do. If it get to the point to where these dudes get mad at me and they, you know, tell them, to don't, don't let me in today fights dead. OK, whatever. That's a bad look on them because they come across as a person that can dish it out, but they can't take it or they're being extremely too emotional. So, you know, I just wanted to get that out the way. And also, I wanted to say thanks to all the supporters that's been here with me from the beginning that came along somewhere in the middle of my journey. And some of the new people welcome aboard. So uh, with that being said, I want to talk about, you know, Tank. And. I'm sorry, I have to say this about Tank 
And this is what I mean about just keeping it 100. At the end of the day, I know Tank watches this stuff and, and you know, Tank will, you know, text or call and say, hey, I don't want to talk to this dude. Don't let him in my fights. That's fine. But I just had to really just explain something and and, and speak, not going to say peace, but speak on Tank and his lack of common sense and his, you know, basically his public display of ignorance, you know, lack of knowledge and basically putting on a minstrel show and also making a fool of himself by putting out misinfo. Now, for some reason, Tank has been protecting and defending Ryan Garcia. And his explanation why is just absolutely absurd. Now, I'm going to continue to expose Ryan Garcia. Um, it's at this point with me, I don't care if his B samples come back uh, with a different result. To me, I believe Ryan Garcia popped dirty. And that's just the bottom line. Because at the end of the day, we all know boxing is proved they corrupt by you got people that's actually trying to cape and make excuses for Ryan Garcia popping dirty. Uh, or, or, you know, like I said, I'd rather somebody not speak on it at all. Like just say no comment, like what Adrian Broder did. If you don't want to go in deep detail, if you don't want to basically implicate yourself or you don't want to put yourself in a position where the powers that be may you know, run some interference when it come time to get back in the ring or whatever the case may be, or when it comes to the money, then I get it. But just hearing Tank say that Eddie Hearn is to blame um, and he don't trust Eddie Hearn when Tank should already know. And I think we all know that Eddie Hearn does not promote Ryan Garcia. He's promoted by Golden Boy. Now, if you wanted to, put that on Oscar De La Hoya and all that kind of stuff and Golden Boy then, okay, you could put that in and in, in point that in a direction. But at the same time, I don't think Oscar is around um, Ryan Garcia 24 hours because Oscar and the Golden Boy staff, they got other stuff to do. So I don't think Oscar is sitting around, you know, administering shots to Ryan Garcia. That's up to his his staff, the people that work with him. That's where all that come into play. But to hear Tank constantly um, try to say Eddie Hearn, he just sounded, you just have to say it, he just sounded ignorant and he sounded clueless. And then you had people bigging Tank up for blatantly, blatantly not being truthful or being misinformed. And Tank has been fighting long enough. He already knows who promotes Ryan Garcia. But then he bringing up stuff with, with Connor Ben and, and Dilly and White and all. Yeah, yeah, they did pop dirty. But at the same time, once again, Eddie Hearn didn't have really nothing to do with that promotion. Uh, the top promoter was Golden Boy. They were the top promoter for that fight. So um, Tank, when you listen to Tank, sometimes you cringe when you hear Tank talk. You just It's just cringeworthy when you hear Tank talk. And I think to a certain degree, a lot of people like Tank for the wrong reason. And that's the problem. But I will further break that down. But take needs to understand, once again, Eddie Hearn doesn't promote Ryan Garcia. But I'm going to expose these uh, myths about, well, the Illuminati and the devil and all this stuff uh, tainted Ryan's drug tests. So check it out. Anyway, appreciate you guys. It's your boy, Tail Biz. I'm out.